Today's video is going to be centered on two ideologies, Eurocentrism and Afrocentrism. Both ideologies have a single premise that's been developed over the years to create a narrative that governs them. And since each one of them finds the other unreasonable, I think it's time we dive into these ideologies and better understand where they are coming from. So, we are going to look deep into what Eurocentrism and Afrocentrism really is about. Have you ever wondered why most people know so little about Africa? How African history is hidden from the rest of the world? And why most of the world still believe that Africa doesn't have a history? It might surprise some of you, but this was done intentionally during the transatlantic slave trade. Unfortunately, this is going on to this day. So, how can something that started centuries ago still be working today? And more importantly, why did this even start in the first place? It all started during the 15th century, at a time Europeans were first coming into contact with Africans. They saw the richness and complexities in most African societies, but their main goal coming into Africa was to exploit the people and the land, so clearly they needed to come up with a narrative that Africans were not civilized. They told their countrymen that Africans were barbaric savages without laws and religion, and according to some observers and academics, without even a language, and that they would acquire civilization on the plantation. This tactic worked perfectly because in the end, it justified the exploitation of the African people in the continent, but they started to discover more evidence that Africans were truly civilized. They found ruins of ancient African kingdoms plus major cities that would break down the lie they have been telling themselves and the rest of the world. So obviously, they had to come up with something new or adjust their story. When Europeans first saw Great Zimbabwe in the 1890s, they could not believe that so imposing a structure could have been built by the ancestors of the Africans they found living there. Zimbabwe was not built by either blacks or whites. The people who built it were Semitic. They were brown in color and were evidently the Sabaean people who were a mixture of Arabs and Jews. They denied African heritage, telling the world that Africans couldn't have possibly built those great monuments and kingdoms without outside help. And even today, they would rather credit African achievement to aliens rather than give credit to Africans. This kind of practice has been the backbone of European historians for centuries, which gave birth to the notion that Africans never had a civilization until Europeans set foot into Africa, giving birth to the ideology that Europe is superior, earning the term Eurocentrism. Let's move on to Afrocentrism. But before we continue, kindly subscribe to this channel for more amazing content. Thank you. Afrocentrism was born as a response to Eurocentrism. For nearly 400 years, the narrative that Africans never had a history and culture has dominated the minds of not only the Europeans, but also the African people. So some African historians and philosophers started the argument that such a narrative is not only racist, but a negative stereotype of a whole continent. They started the race to research Africa's true history to change the narrative and reveal the true identity of Africans. Their main goal was to take away the idea that Africans were savages who needed civilization and to debunk the lies told to the world for centuries. According to Afrocentrism, African history and culture began in ancient Egypt, which was the birthplace of world civilization. Egypt presided over a unified black Africa until its ideas and technologies were stolen and its records of accomplishment obscured by Europeans. And the only way to truly rid the inferior mindset out of Africans is to let go of the absurd idea that Europeans are superior. This tactic has worked pretty well too. More Africans are seeking to reclaim the real history of Africa and to spread the word that everything Europeans have said about Africa is a complete lie. Africans are not savages, and the continent is a place where civilization started, but the West tried to hide this history in order to take the knowledge and use it to develop their world. In simple terms, Africa is superior, earning the term Afrocentrism. Obviously, with such a gap of understanding between these ideologies, it's not hard to understand why they don't see eye to eye. Each one of them believes the other is harmful to history, so this has created an endless loop of argument that's been happening for decades, if not centuries. So, where do you stand on this topic? 
Let's have a decent conversation as to why these ideologies is bad for both Africans and Europeans. There is no doubt that Europeans destroyed and denied African history to benefit from the rich resources on the continent and stereotyping a whole continent created Afrocentrism. And at the same time, there are some Africans who take Afrocentrism way too far. Of course, we need to reclaim our history, but we need to do it the right way by creating institutions that will research our past and teach them in schools so that the whole of Africa can learn their history right from the classroom. In simple terms, writing our own history doesn't have to be an argument. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.